Let me announce to you what I said two Sundays ago that the primary interest of Jesus was not the church. In fact, Jesus mentioned the word church only twice. In the entire four gospels, mentioned church twice. Where he said, number one, in Matthew chapter 18, I have given you, I say you are Peter, and upon this rock, I build my church. Twice, the second time, when he talked about the issue of dispute, how to settle it. If you have any issue against your brother, go to him and settle it. You and your brother. Oh, Matthew chapter 16, sorry about that. 16, 18, sorry. He said, go to your brother and in secret, personally, iron it out with him. If he does not, take two or three people. And if he does not, take it to the church. Those are the only two moments that Jesus used the word church. But kingdom from the beginning to the end. Let me remind you, his first preaching in Mark chapter 1. And I want you to have a little bit of understanding. I've told you this before just to remind you and to help those who are listening to me for the first time. Mark's gospel is the oldest gospel. Actually, first Thessalonica is about the oldest of all the writings in the New Testament. It's about that. Followed by Mark, according to biblical scholars, backed up with archaeological facts and all of that. First Thessalonica is about the oldest of all the writings. And then Mark's gospel, one of the oldest, but the oldest of the gospels so when you read mark pay attention to mark mark is the source in most cases of other gospels especially matthew especially matthew mark's gospel chapter one the very first chapter verses 14 and 15 we see the beginning of the ministry of jesus and see what after John was put in prison that means that dispensation is gone his time had begun because as long as John was there in active ministry he will not begin John was to come and announce him and John said I must go lower less while he goes greater so John withdrew from the scene. He entered into the stage. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of what? Not the gospel of the church. Church is a servant of the kingdom. The greatest problem in the history of the church is forgetting the centrality of the kingdom and focusing on church. I've done a little bit of church history, of course, as a seminarian. Very basic thing, both in philosophy, both in your first degree and your second degree. So I know, I know a little bit about the errors of the church. like what is currently happening that the Pope of the Holy Roman Catholic Church is inspired by whatever inspires him to talk about spontaneous blessing upon same sex couple he has lost sense of the kingdom it's about church it's one of the most unfortunate things in the history of the church and I will never stop talking about it. It breaks me to the bone. I'm a preacher. I'm a defender of the faith.
when it comes to the truth of God, no man is big. Only God is God. So when attention is on church, we can adjust to accommodate a lot of nonsense and a lot of human excesses. It is the kingdom that shapes, gives life to, vision to, and shapes the church. Every time attention is taken from kingdom to a church, there will be terrible error. Like this is the season of error because everything is church, 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 church. People start church and say, you cannot marry another church. You cannot do this. This is it. So it now becomes like we build little walls around ourselves. <laughs> Nonsense. We are all instruments of the kingdom. And kingdom is about the reign, the rulership, the government of the almighty king. The God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus said, he preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. See what he said in verse 15. What did he say? The time is fulfilled. And what? Kingdom of God is at hand. Kingdom of God is at hand. By the grace of God. I've been given vision of the kingdom. Not perfectly. Not clearly. A little bit of it. For for quite, that's why those of you used to listen to me on radio from the first time I started preaching. People told me, you, are not, you don't preach like a Catholic priest. Have you heard that before? People will meet me and listen to you, but you sound so different. You're not like, why? Right from the seminary, right from the time he came into my life, right from the time I started, I understood that I'm not called to preach doctrine of the church, to defend the doctrine of the church. That are meant to announce his reign. And I've been consistent. That is why here I say, if I cannot bless you, go to another church. So my interest, one of the advices I had at the beginning of the church, say, make sure when people come, close the back door, let them not go out. I take, I take that advice from somebody I honor. But I threw it into a dustbin. I don't close the back door. I leave the back door open. The day I am no longer serving the purpose of God over you, get out. As long as you are going to a place that God has ordained for you. My business is not to keep you in prison and have number and carry the pride of somebody that his church is in thousands and you, are, you don't have the life of God in you. Not interested in that. Number doesn't, appre, doesn't impress me. Every time I see number, my question is that what do they have? What have they received? What have they become? That's what I pray about. It's because it's about the kingdom of God. Not the kingdom of man. It's not church that makes man arrogantly proud and big. Big because of the number. The people come with security guards and cars everywhere. Does it honor God? What if they also belong to a cult and secret cult? And they come and pay tithe here and go and give greater tithes to Satan. And you use their tithe and become big while they are still paying tithe to Satan and you don't know. You see, the time is what? The time has come. What will you do? Repent. The time has fulfilled. The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom, the rulership, the reign of God. God as king has come. God is creator. He loves you so much. So you, you can relate with God as my creator. Who loves me? My protector, my provider. But God as king means you play by the rule of the kingdom. You cannot stay in a kingdom and run your own parallel kingdom. Marry as you like. Kingdom. Means what does the king say? So what I would have expected the, the Pope of the Holy Roman Catholic Church to do now is what does the king say 
In his word. Because these things have been written down. As the king amended his word. Don't tell me. Don't tell me your, your interpretation to suit religious secularism and humanism. Apostasy has entered holy places. And it's a time to watch and pray. So when we say, visit us, visit the church, it's not a prayer you pray carelessly. I don't want to bore you with a few things. Just telling you, when it comes to the kingdom, I can insult anybody. Don't have respect. No respect. When God is involved as king, who has a title? Who has a title? Who is important? So that's the kingdom. That's what Jesus brought. When we talk about kingdom, it's about authority. It's about power. That is why in every nation, you see, no matter how small a nation is, it keeps an army. What made the Roman Empire different from almost all the empires before Roman Empire? It was the only empire that had a standing army. Standing army means they are in active service other than other kingdoms when there is war you rally people until the roman empire you rally people you blow trumpet you bring people and enlist people and they go to war but in the roman army there was a, in the roman empire there was a standing army paid from from taxpayers funds And that is why the Roman Empire was so different. <laughs> Every nation of the earth, no matter how tiny, has military, has armed forces, has intel intelligence. From the newest nation, South Sudan, to about the oldest, you will see a standing army. So, army does not stand to smile. When you see a soldier who is smiling, he's not a soldier. They are trained to frown. They are trained to shoot, not to wound you, but to kill you. Police are not trained to shoot and kill because they are for a civil society. So they can shoot you and, take, and they take you to the hospital. But when the army is called in, it means, no way I once the army is called and it means expect dead bodies. Because their training is not that after shooting you, you still talk. The last talk is as you are being shot. So when the scripture is talking about kingdom, it means king, the scripture is talking about power has come. Fight has come. Battles have come. The battle of God is at hand. The army of God is at hand. It's no longer something reserved for Elisha, for Gehazi to see. A multitude of hosts on the mountain. The horses of fire is now for everyone who is in the kingdom. In the kingdom of God, sir, there are endless army of God called legion. Just because I say, if my kingdom were to be of this world, ask my father, and will give me 10,000 angels. Give me legions. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this world. That means he did not come to... <laughs> Let's forget about that. Say kingdom. Say battle. That's why we are talking about warfare. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. We have only one more communion service. Why do we stay long in church during this season? Let me explain in our fans. It also will take some time today. Why do we stay long? You know, we have prayed many prayers. And then we worship. Then we preach. Then we do anointing. And then we take communion. Why? We are on 40 days fast. Why? Want to overflow. You must be full, sir, before you are overflow. Any empty bottle cannot overflow. So those of you sit down here and quarrel with me in your mind. Empty and half and little. 
And you all say, when we say overflow, you all say, say overflow, shut up. Receive and be full. And then when you are full, witches and wizards will see in your overflow that maybe or more, that you have passed their level. The things that oppose you in the office will salute you. Sir, you have overflown. Rise to your feet. Say, I am in for overflow. A young pretty woman, they're very light skin. <laughs> I see your light skin, beautiful girl. Say it loud. When others are saying it, raise your hand and say it all. Because God brought you for this moment. Everyone, raise your two hands. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am in for the overflow. I can no longer walk about life empty. I can no longer be half. Jesus did not bring half life. He brought fullness, abundant life. Say, I am full because I'm receiving and I will not give up until I overflow. And then when I have overflow, I will keep overflowing because I will never stop drinking. In Jesus' name. Is that true for you? Then be seated. Congratulations. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. Everyone read it. You are not reading loud enough. Now, pay attention to what Jesus is saying. See, from the time of John the Baptist, why? John the Baptist is the announcer of the kingdom. He said, one stands amongst you in our midst whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with power. So from that time that he said it, Violence was inaugurated. Contention. Fight. Do you know, as at the time Jesus was less than one month, the fight was so strong that children within the age of, ages of two perished. Perished. And by that time, John the Baptist was already born. So from the time of John the Baptist, war began. The war of the kingdom. Violence means bloodshed. Means battle. Means if you don't kill me, I kill you. This is what Jesus brought. Did not bring very good doctrine that will separate one church from another. So I've seen during occasion, maybe you have a wedding. You see some people who are ministers from other churches. They come and sit down. See how they carry their face like they know so much. Judging and condemning everything you do. In their eyes, they are superior. The way they do it is, is superior. And some people coming to church for the first time who go to another church. When you say people should stand, they feel it's not for them. You know, they are church people. Young Agabasi. Church serves God as king. So you, no church is better than another church. The, the difference is in what? Kingdom. The difference is what? Kingdom. You don't come and sit down or you don't go to a church. You can get GFCC in and to shut up. You don't have my endorsement. Every place has something to teach you. Learn. Be humble. It is God that we serve as king. Not any bishop. Not pope. Not any papa in the Lord. So when he saw it here, he said, well, you don't more, you don't more, you don't more, you don't more. Thank you, Bang, you don't more. We are talking about Itang Ebang Hido Kingdom. Tangebang Kingdom. An Hido Kingdom or violence. That means to have what God plans for you, you must fight. To keep what God has given to you, you must fight. This is not church doctrine. This is kingdom revelation. 
to enter into the possession, your inheritance in God. He said, God has given to me by grace, but it is by fight you take it, and it is by fight you keep it. Grace gives you freely, but fights makes you lay hold of it. Because whatever is given to you freely, the devil is against it. The other kingdoms are against it. Jesus Christ didn't say kingdom has come. He said the kingdom of God has done what? Ah, come on. What did he say? He said the kingdom of God has come. If the kingdom of God has come, it means there are other kingdoms. He didn't say kingdom has come. The kingdom of God has come. There's the kingdom of Satan. The kingdom of darkness. This is what Ephesians is talking about in Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go to verse 12. For we do not wrestle against what? Flesh and blood. But against what? what? When you use the word principalities, these are authorities over nations, over territories. Over kingdoms, principles, ranks, arche means rulers, against powers, against the rulers. When you talk about rulership, rulers rule over a kingdom, over a territory. So there are kingdoms, kingdoms of darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. These are kingdoms that stand against human destiny. That you are saved by grace. But this kingdom, they deny you. The interest of this kingdom is to deny you of all the benefits of your grace salvation. These kingdoms, they vow to make sure the plan of God is not done on earth as it is in heaven. Just can say, just can say, let it be done on earth as it is done where? But they say, no. It will be done on earth as it is done in hell. That wealth, business, will not be according to the plan of God. Be according to the plan of Satan, the devil. Do you even know it? And you play church, you don't understand kingdom. Kingdom is instruction and command. Rulers don't give suggestion. Rulers issue command. So you come and sit down in church and play church with me. Which of you knows church like I do? Was ever gone to seminary for 16 semesters and became a Catholic priest for more than 13 years. The Catholic church is the, is the mother of churches. So you don't play church with me. I know it. I know the difference. Church is religion. Kingdom is spiritual and power. Glory to God. That means you have to honor commands. The command of the king. Because if you don't honor the command of the king, or that kingdom will use you for breakfast. Fry your future for lunch. We are not here for smile. Who told you this matter is about smile. If this matter were to be a smile and beautiful hairstyle and dress, I will not pay the price that I have to pay to answer it. It will be nonsense. It is a matter of death or life. Heaven or hell. Light or darkness. That's how serious it is. From the time of John the Baptist, violence came. Go back to that scripture and what happens? From the time, the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom, the kingdom suffered what? And I've told you that in all of Matthew, instead of kingdom of God, the word kingdom of heaven is used. And it means the same thing. Do you understand it? What Matthew is saying is what Mark is saying when it comes to kingdom. Okay. Say so the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And what happens? 
not churchgoers will take it by they take it by grace not new generation churchgoers will take it by the doctrine of your papa that's not what the scripture is saying it is the violent. My work is to initiate, trigger, and cause the violence of the kingdom to burst from you. That's my call. Too many of you are, you are not comfortable with me. You are so pleasant and comfortable that I'm useless to you. I'm useless to you because I'm speaking a different language and you're expecting a different thing from me. You expect me to come and call you out and give you prophecy. Don't go no prophecy. What has changed in your life? All of you have gone to places you know prophecy. When your time comes, will you handle it? Because your time has many adversaries. Contenders. Rise to your feet. I say rise to your feet. You know, after now, I am very normal. I told you a visitation came from, Isaac, from, from the presidency. I've told you severally, I represent the authorities. So to them meant a whole lot to me. Because the highest authority of my call showed up to say, I know what you are going through. I've been given encouragement. That means it tells me fire on. And by the grace of God this year, I will fire you. I will fire you until a lukewarm person can pray and forget time. I will fire you until a foolish husband that does not know the value of marriage and taking care of children will be arrested and brought to sanity and wisdom in the Holy Ghost. Oh, sir, I will fire you until a young girl who is staying here and sleeping with somebody's husband and a young man who is staying here and a girl brought you and you have not yet heard the word of God, that immorality will vanish from your head and nonsense will disappear from your spirit. Lift up your two hands. I'm still firing you. I'm still firing you. I will fire you until the garment of failure is taken from you. And the garment of the mighty is put upon you for the first time. Oh, by the grace of God, I will fire you until you are angry about poverty. And no longer take pleasure in begging. Oh, I will fire you until you rise up and get angry with a little witch that has taken peace from you. And you strangle a beast that has eaten your blessing. Lift up your tongue. I will, by the word of God, fire you until sin no longer gives you pleasure. And righteousness is at home in your peace, at home in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say, fire me. fire me. Be seated. Thank God I will do it. I'll do it. Do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Thank you so much for the permission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> When I resigned from the Catholic church was to give me room to be mad. So that after preaching, big people don't call me and correct me. You go now and you sit down and call you room, you know. Sir, never get to kingdom. Absolutely. I, I have freedom to insult somebody because he has nobody to go and report me to. Except God. And when you report me to God, I tell you the authority came and told me, I know where you are. <laughs> and you are doing well. <laughs> the authority will come back and tell me, fire them. Fire them. Fire them. I praise God. I let the, uh, the kingdom.
kingdom solvers violence. Receiving children, keeping children, growing them in the vision of the kingdom is not a matter of pleasure. It takes violence. You are asking God, give me marriage. Do you have a violent life to keep marriage? And keep it according to the vision of God. He said, God bless me with wealth. Do you have what it takes to keep wealth from corruption? Many people have received wealth and turned to Satan for preservation. Because they did not have violence to resist Satan. Satan says, the kingdom of this world belongs to me. He told Jesus, the kingdom of this world and all its resources, the wealth, the glory, they belong to me. Bow down to me. So when you are in the place of making wealth, the first attack of Satan is telling you, you know, in this kingdom, when it comes to wealth, it take it from me. That's why a lot of people, God bless them. But in less than 10 years, they become active servants of Satan. Because of the lies, because they don't have the violence in their spirit. The same thing in political space. People are lifted in politics. Two, three, four years, they are active Satanists. Because the devil lies to them. Politics and governance is something of Satan on earth. He told Jesus... Just told him, <laughs> it is written. It's written. You must come to the place of violently, repeatedly saying to things, it is written. That means this is the order and it cannot be changed. And that is not church, it is kingdom. When the issues of life come, once Satan comes to you, it's not church doctrine that is required. It is kingdom life. And kingdom life is a violent life. A violent life. A life of valor and power. Jesus did not bring persuasion. Did not bring philosophy. So Jesus brought power. John said, I baptized you with water for repentance. But he will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire that's violence sir have you seen fire consume a place it's violence fire burns by violence that's what Jesus brought the spirit that descended upon him was a spirit of peace for reconciliation but for those who have been reconciled for them to live on earth he gave them fire Because for you to maintain what God has given to you. Who told you this call? The reason I live the way I live is because it takes violence to keep this call. It takes violence to keep call. Living the Catholic Church was an experience of violence. It was not a pleasurable thing. It was not negotiation. It's like if I die, if I perish, I perish. That's what's violence. That's the foundation of this call. If you are looking for another church, don't come back next time. There are many churches. God did not send me to start another church. God was sent me to raise a movement of angry, hungry, violent kingdom people. How will we take kingdom? How will we take marriage back? How will we stop the lies of the devil telling some people they are homosexual? And they are lesbian and say, nah, you're a bad Shut up! You know, nah, you're a bad That's what the devil has given to you and you have accepted. We don't do that by negotiation, by philosophy and theology. We do it by proof, by violence. That's why Goshen 2024 is the inauguration of the new season of the call. Sir, it's not just an, an announcement of God of power and might. It's a confrontation of principalities and power. I bless God for a woman who led prayer today. I'm talking about all the opposition against 2024. People are bringing down our banners in places. What is our banner doing to you? you go and tell you because... Is a, is a confrontation of the power that sponsors them. Sir, not a churchman. 
I respect all church people but I don't envy them a kingdom man a kingdom man rise to your feet prostrate is healed by power now uh, I don't know I say prostrate is drying up now in the name of Jesus infection in intimate places lumps in places dry up in the name of Jesus this is the awakening of violence you must go to war from now you can no longer wait for the enemy to show you pity and let go what belongs to you it is the violent go to that scripture it is the violent that does what take it not by doctrine takes it by force I don't have time to go into the scripture today I trust God the remaining part of this scripture of this message will come next week what I want you to do right now is to ask God equip me with the violent weapon of the kingdom equip me before you pray that prayer because I have to summarize and I cannot move on beyond that word if I go into the full teaching we we'll lose concentration the violent must take it by, by force that means you must operate in force from now you must accept and tell God I'm not afraid of being enlisted into your force God has told me on our anniversary two Sundays from now we will inaugurate GFCC as we inaugurate leadership and all that we shall be called GFCC army now the army that we call the army as ministers have been given a new designation so we are the army remember on the day I told you I shared this I'm a kind of person that I share with you encounters the morning into the day of our first church gathering must have been 13 was it 13th of February in 2020, 2017 I was told turn these people into an army because I was complaining about the kind of people I saw the kind of people that came to me few wretched tattered poorly cladded hungry looking discouraging people I love beauty and I love I just love wealth I love things being beautiful so I was complaining in that dream to the person who represented the authority of my call I complained to the person see see is this and the person got angry with me angrily commanded me turn these people into an army that's the mandate of GFCC that's why we say the least amongst us is what mighty that's it so we shall assume our status on our anniversary so we shall be the army I mean, it means you are here, you know you are a soldier. And I'm not here to talk to you in the language of your past, in the language of your convenience, in the language of your weakness. I will talk to you in the manner commanders speak to soldiers. Go and Google, check YouTube. Oh, commanders. Hey, right, everybody. That's how it is. So when you come, I do hey, you just do well. That's all. That's how we do it. Don't come and, I don't come and talk. I don't come and talk and you sit down. And sit down and look at me twice. You go to a church. There are churches. We are the army. You're going to be the army. So violence. Now you're going to do something very fundamental. Just because like the kingdom is close so is only close. Close means it's accessible. You can be born again, but you have not accepted the kingdom. You can give your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but you have not accepted the kingdom. What does it mean to accept the kingdom, sir? What it means to accept the kingdom is to submit to the government of God and ready to take instruction from the king and to benefit from all the resources of the king and his kingdom. 
And people who are born again and talk about, I am, I am saved by grace through faith. And they talk about their justification by the works of Christ and talk about all the wonderful things. But they are not under the command of government of God. And they do all sorts of terrible, sinful things and they explain they are saved by grace. And nothing can be used against them. That is from Satan. That's not what Jesus brought. He brought God as your local government chairman, as your governor, as your president. He brought God as your United Nations uh, Secretary General. He brought God as the first and the only authority. The scripture says that you should honor all authority because it comes from where? From God. He's the authority. I told you a principal from the headquarters visited me. How will a principal visit me from the headquarters and I called a person, His Excellency? So these words are not addressed to CEOs. CEOs are not called His Excellency. MDs are not addressed as His Excellency. Excellency is the, the singular title of principles, potentate of kingship and kingdom. So that is what keeps me here. That's why no human hate can break me not a day because I have the full command of God's military on my side so that is the truth so what we are going to do today is for the first time whether you are born again or not to say I accept the government of God this kingdom that Jesus brought to stay under his kingdom walk under his command before any other command. That means if there is any other command that does not agree with his command, you set it aside. And they say, we'll kill you. You say, his kingdom will defend me. And a boss will say, I will sack you. He say, if the kingdom allows, I have all the resources from the kingdom to make you go to bed today and not wake up tomorrow. That's how Shedak, Mesha, and Abednego made history into the book of Daniel. He said, the God we serve will save us. But even if he does not save us, we will not bow. And the king got angry. He said, make the fire double in anger and put them there. Those who put them there died. And they began to walk around singing. And the king woke up and said, ah, we put three men there. He said, oh God, king, what is happening? I see the footman. The fourth man is the host of heaven in their midst. Lift up your two hands. This is a season. This is a season of the fourth man. This is the season of the army. This is the season of the power. This is the season of the God of power and might. This is the season beyond argument. I'm not interested about what man has said. I am interested in what the king has said. There is the fourth man in the fire. And there is a fourth man in the lion's den. I am speaking to somebody. What kills others will not kill you. It is not doctrine that gave me the call, sir. God spoke to me. I answered this call on the bill of God, sir. My case rests on his altar, sir. I'm not a good man or perfect man, but I know God. I've heard from him. The reason I'm standing here is that I'm serving him. Not interested in church or power or influence or money. So somebody sent me. I want to please the headquarters. I'm interested in the headquarters. All resources flow there. Flow from there. All authorities come from God. And God says, honor them. That means the day they turn against you, ignore them. Because the headquarters will silence them. Lift up your hands today. I rebuke all layers of authority that are against the will of God for you in the name of Jesus. Authorities in witchcraft. Authorities in occult. Authorities in the marine. Authorities in human government, in politics. Authorities in organizations. Authority in churches. They come from God. And if anyone says over my dead body, I decree their burial in the name of Jesus. Because 
because they come from God, they cannot walk against God. So, what you give birth to cannot be bigger than you. A son is son, a father is a father. The greatness of a son cannot replace the father. So, when God says all authorities come from him, it means any authority that says no to God's plan to you, that authority is under condemnation. I say now, this is a decision. That authority is under judgment in the name of Jesus. Whether that authority is a landlord, the earth and its fullness thereof, whether that authority is a manager in the office, a supervisor. Every authority that opposes the plan of God for you in his kingdom. As I speak now, as you hear me, if that authority is father, it applies. If that authority is mother, it applies. Because you are a child of God and as you submit yourself to the kingdom, it means any other authority that says who is not who is like who is God that wants to act like he's God. I I pronounce judgment. I pronounce judgment. I pronounce again 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 judgment. You cannot continue 2027, 2024, begging a man after you have fasted, after you have prayed and sought God. No man has authority. To prevent the plan of God in your life. Please lift up your two hands. And close your eyes for a moment. Not be distracted. I want you to in your heart consciously decide. Today. I'm submitting to God. As my king. To live under his kingship, his kingdom, obey his command in his son Jesus Christ by the full help of the Holy Spirit and to enjoy all the resources, the victories, the opportunities, the securities, the safety of his kingdom. Speak it in your heart and decide it out and speak it before I give you any word to speak. Next week, we shall go into serious warfare to cross into the week of Goshen 2024. All of you are hearing me. You will be sound and safe as you come back. Death will not snatch anybody. Speak those words. Make consecration. Giving yourself and your family. If you are a married person, say, I give you myself as your servant and son, I also give you my marriage, my family. Under your kingdom and kingship. To serve you. And thereby live in your economy. Rato mende prea to malikata la masiando to. Rondo me in the pre lo son di ke pre li ata Shone amata lo pro ne anda kato Rende pro la masikata Le pro ne ke te ando to pre ato 
Notomeni aprele atonda sata. Ropre likato. Say, Lord, take me. Speak to Jesus. Say, I repent of all my sins and turn to you. Mando pray. Say, I can no longer live according to my own command. I'm too small to be my God. Say, I'm too small to be my king. I can no longer obey my will and my ways. Jesus, accept my life. Save me from my sins. I believe in my heart. And I confess with my tongue. Oh, I believe. Believe in you. Believe you paid the price. And I confess you were raised to life for my sin. I accept forgiveness as I repent. I shall no longer live for myself. I shall no longer live according to my ways. Lord Jesus, you are the kingdom of God. You are the ruler, sure. I accept you in my heart. As a child of God, renew your dedication and submit to the kingdom. Say, you own me. You own my resources. You own my gifts. You own my time. Now I receive your own gifts. I receive your own resources. I receive your own time. So I shall no longer live according to my resources. I have submitted to your kingship and kingdom. From today, Lord, I live according to your resources. I live according to your provision. In Christ the Lord, my hope is me. He is my life, my strength, my soul. The solid Fem through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love? Lift up our two hands and sing. What depths of peace? When fears are still, when striving cease, my comfort, my all in all, He in the love of Christ, I stand in Christ alone. To conflict, sing it from your heart, sing it from your spirit. Fullness of God in her, let's bear this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the words he gave to say. The deal on that cross as Jesus died. The wrath of God was satisfied for every sin. On him was His body lies of the world by the then first in form in glorious day of the great hero. Oh, oh. 
to heaven. Say, Lord, let the army of your kingdom come to fight for me. Say, Lord, let the resources of your kingdom be made available to me. of your kingdom come for me let the special forces of your kingdom come to me as I take back my door tap into the forces of the kingdom open your mouth and speak the military of your kingdom come for me. Let the air force of your kingdom come for me. Let the navy of your kingdom come to battle with the marine. Let the air force come to battle with witches and wizards. Let the army come to battle with the powers of ancestry and of God's kingdom. Say, Lord, I take back my health by force. I am no longer waiting for doctors. I take it back. Say, Lord, I am tired of waiting. I take my health by force. My children by force I take my marriage by force I take my business opportunity by force I take my promotion
motion by force. I thought somebody would speak. negotiation too much of talk it is time to take Micah Micah chapter 3 verse 8 lift up your two oil I mean your oil and open it Micah chapter 3 verse 8 read it with me Micah chapter 3 verse 8 Read it in, put it for me in NIV. One, two, go, everyone. That's it. That's it. Hold it there. Once you are filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord, it means you will do something. It means you will declare. You will declare. This one was to declare to Jacob his transgression to Israel and to Israel his sin but you are to declare to whatever stands at your door that the time has come that you are taking it by force and then you will summon the entire army of Israel the entire army of God in Christ to cut them off to cut them off are you ready father in the name of Jesus speak upon this all they are no longer ordinary by this anointing the activation of Micah chapter 3 verse 8 and the revelation of the resources of the kingdom to fight a battle of generation over families over businesses over wombs over, ma over marriages over health over destinies Lord by this anointing let the entire force of your kingdom as it pertains to this revelation and the execution of your project of salvation over these ones let them be released in the name of jesus lord at the end of this service lord let somebody go into testimony this is how i bless this oil in the name of jesus christ put a little of it in your right hand 
if you are released to share with somebody fine if you are not you just forget about it in case you are not released to share with somebody and drop the bottle of the oil and that little oil in your right palm put it on your forehead say in the name of Jesus Christ by this anointing I am filled with power with the spirit of the Lord and with justice and might I declare begin to declare to this I declare to death you die now I declare to sickness at my door die now I declare to wild beasts and dragons be cut into pieces I declare to fear vanish I declare to witchcraft be broken I declare to the married be overthrown I declare to what stands in my door open your mouth the angels of God are working for you